Right everyone, I'm at Hamden Park where the, the sun is shining because in just a day's time by the time you're watching this, Celtic are going to be facing Rangers in the final of the Scottish League Cup. So we thought we'd come out as we usually like to do, give you a wee glimpse of how things are going. But it's not just me on today's video, we do have the legends themselves, Joe Ledley and Asim on the channel. Asim sporting a, a vintage Celtic <laughs> top. Is it, is it vintage 2006, something like that? It's a cracker mate. 2006, I, I, I hadn't even forgotten I had it still. Um, 17 years old I was at the time, so uh, it's an old one, but uh, it's one of my favourites. I'm sure I've seen you wearing it as well, Have you, or is it not this Maybe one back though? in the day, certainly not. Right. I'm just trying to do the maths to work out what age you are if you were 17 so, back back all those years ago. 34 now, 34. Um, but okay. I remember Nakamura famously scoring in this top uh, at Old Trafford. Um, but I some good memories there. A few years before your time, Joe, have you got a favourite Celtic kit from from your time, Joe? Black one was nice. Yeah, I did. Yeah, the black. Yeah, do you know what? I did like the black one, the all black. That was a lovely one. And I think it was the same year. The, the Obviously, the stripes going across, but really thin. I can't remember if it was. Yeah. I can't remember what year it was, but that one. Champions League. The Champions League one. Against Barca. Oh. Remember yeah. the yellow and kind of black one as well, the, the with the weird design that, that we wore. I think I remember us wearing it Easter Road whenever we played them, and I, I love that was a strange kit, but but I, I loved that one. How how are we feeling about Sunday, guys? Joe, we'll, we'll start with you. We've been kind of canvassing people throughout the week, and some Celtic fans are a wee bit nervous, uh, some very confident. How, how do you get before these big games as a fan? Yeah, it's, you know, obviously I'm, I'm I'm always a confident sort of person I think it's got it is going to be a difficult one there's two teams going in there with uh with great form obviously good attacking as well so it's it's going to be difficult but I'm, I'm very confident I think there's the way Celtic are doing and the way they're playing and that sort of flow and no fear at the moment is I just can't see them losing and I don't want to jinx it but you know I've got so much confidence in this team and, and obviously with the fans behind them we need to start really bright I think Starting early is vital. You know, getting an early goal would really settle the nerves and put a lot of pressure on Rangers to come out. And then I think we will sort of create a lot more chances. But um, no, I'm, I'm going for a Celtic win. Well, you've got a brilliant prediction record, Joe. So so no worries at all about you. You tipping Celtic for a win there. What, what about you, Asim? Um, I'm feeling very nervous about it. Not in a, a worried nervous, just nervous about the game. Like excited as as well, obviously. But it's it's probably the most nervous I've gone into a game under Ange, just because it's a final um, and it's against them, and you know, just obviously, so it means so much. Uh, and um, I'm similar to Joe, obviously confident in how Celtic are playing and and you know how we've been under Ange, but at the same time, just yeah, you you just don't know with a final. I think it will be tight, but um, yeah, as it's got closer, like this week has just dragged. Um, honestly, I just wish it was sun Sunday already. Um, so I'm looking forward to it, but my dad hates these games. He always has. He's always said he just he hates it. He, he can't he can't deal with the nerves. And I never used to be like that. I used to always be like, nah, it's fine, it's exciting. But the, I think the older I'm getting, I feel like the same. It's just it's it's a combination of both, isn't it? It's excitement, but yeah. also just nervous. When you were a player, Joe, did did you enjoy the lead up to these games? Did the week drag in for you as well? Yeah. It, it, it... It did drag, um, but I loved it. I, I don't know why, I, always, I think I said it before, but I always loved these sort of big games, these big pressure games where you need to perform. And and obviously, don't get me wrong, I've been on the on the end of some defeats and, and losing a few finals in my time, but um, there's nothing better. You know, it's just, 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 you can smell it, the atmosphere, everyone arriving in numbers. And, you know, I think Hamden wasn't my favourite place to obviously play, but um, you know, I've had also some fantastic memories as well. As a player, like when you're walking out, obviously the tunnel and the fan, do you feel nerves then, or is it just like an adrenaline rush, a, a buzz as a player when you're kind of in these big games? Yeah, for me it was just adrenaline rush. You know, I just couldn't wait to go out there. It, you know, a lot of the, a lot of players are different. Um, a lot of players would get nervous, and you know, some people would be sick before before games. But for me and myself, I was just so excited and just couldn't wait to go out there. You know, you're lined up in the tunnel, you're looking over. The other side, you just think, right, come on, we got to do these over. And you can just feel the atmosphere. You can hear them as well. And I don't know why it's just a special moment finals. It's just, it's just totally different to league games. But you know, I think for Celtic, it's just important for them now to, to get off to an early early start. 
Right, I want to find out what it's like to actually be a player in, in the lead up to the matches. Before then, Joe, important business. You, you sent out an, an SOS tweet on Saturday. You were in Dublin looking for a, a place to watch the, the Aberdeen game. Did, did you get recommendations? Did, did you manage to see the game? Yeah, do you know, it was sort of last minute as well. Um, was, we went for my brother's 40th birthday, me, my wife, uh, my, obviously his wife and my brother. There's just four of us and I put a tweet out and thought, Let's go and watch a Celtic game. Obviously, didn't go down well with the wives, but um, you know, I thought, what a place to go and watch it in Dublin. And sent the tweet out. And to be fair, a few few of the Celtic fans got back to me. And I think we watched it. There's a pub called Jackson's just over the over the canal, and we went in there. There's about a hundred odd Celtic fans, so um, wow. they were fantastic with me. They were brilliant, and you know, what a performance as well from Celtic. I missed the first goal, or I missed uh, McGregor's first goal, but managed to see the the last three. Right, um, I want to just chat about what it's like to be a player in these games, Joe. Um, you know, when, when you're looking back at, at your playing days, playing big finals at Hamden, I think you played in a couple, maybe more actually. When when do you wake up? Uh, where do you wake up? Talk, talk us through what it's like in the morning of a game. Yeah, obviously at Celtic, especially we'd always be in a hotel the day before. I think it was Dakota we always used to uh, used to stay at. Um, you just try and prepare. You always have your pre-match meal, sort of three hours, three and a half hours before kickoff. You wake up. Some will go for breakfast. It's, it was optional at the time. Obviously, depending we kick off, uh, three o'clock it was optional. I, I used to skip breakfast and go straight to pre-match. And then you have your walk after your pre-match, get back, showered, and then you leave. Then about two hours before kickoff, get there for an hour and a half, and then. People are different. Some might listen to the headphones in. Some might listen to what the music is already on in the changing rooms. And then you sort of just get prepared then. Uh, activation and, you know, some will have a massage. Some will be stretching. Just waiting for your warm-up. And then it's, that's the best is when you're just ready for your warm-up and you get at it and you can feel the, the atmosphere building and the fans coming into the stadium. And even when you drive up and you see the fans, it, it's, it's just an amazing feeling. And, you know, everyone cheering you. But on the, on the flip side as well, a lot of them... Uh, Showing a few things, a few fingers up you and look, looking at you and, <laughs> and booing you. So you know it's it's it's, a, it's the flip side which I I loved. I love these games. When would you go to bed the night before, and would you struggle to sleep? Yeah, I used to. I, used to, I for some reason I was always sort of eleven, twelve o'clock, no matter what time, uh, what game it was. I was sort of a late sort of guy to go to sleep. But um, I used to try and like my lions more. That took me took me a while to get up early in the morning but um yeah about 11 12 o'clock we'd we'd have obviously we had such a good connection we'd have our dinner around seven o'clock and then we'd stay up some might play cards some might watch movies together have a massage so time or last finish you're looking at about nine to ten o'clock anyway and what's on the uh, the menu for breakfast that's that's my big question what what kind of things would you have to eat i'm asking Maybe the important cereal. questions here asim <laughs> Cereal, there'd be uh, toast, there'd be some eggs, probably beans. Um, that's about it. Yogurt, porridge, sort of the, the standard stuff. And then you go into your pre match and then you sort of have your pastas, your chickens, still some eggs, um, toast as well. So, yeah, just a, a, a mixture. Any questions, Asim, on any daft questions on the preparations for a game like that? Um. Don't, well, I guess, like you say, but even around your time, you had some kind of characters in the changing room. Is there anyone that that really kind of took ownership of that, and or was it just like the captain? Um, I think it was obviously Scott Brown at the time that would kind of get everyone going for these big ones. Yeah, you know, Brownie could just completely change. You know, one minute before the day of the game, he'd be having a laugh, he'd be, you know, having a bit of banter, doing things up up to no good. But then when it comes to game day, he's completely just focused and you can see nothing because he's just oblivious to anything and he's just so straightforward his mind is set he's ready to prepare and he you could see he didn't really say much before games obviously until we were in the huddle um but he just you could see the discipline he was everyone just looked up to him but we had a few strong characters myself um chris commons as well at the time you know a few older heads gary hooper coming through um so like i said a lot of people are, are individuals some are shouters some are trying to get you up but some people are really quiet and won't say anything and just do the talking on the pitch really and, and final question Joe did, did you ever get any kind of one bit of advice from 
either Neil Lennon or a player about games at Hamden that, that kind of stuck with you? Um, yeah, obviously, you know, it's, 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 it's quite far away from from the pitch. You're not sort of used to having the fans so far away and he just basically just embrace the atmosphere as much as you can and obviously you've worked so hard to come to this point to a final. Um, just <laughs> don't lose, really. <laughs> Um, that's that's the beauty of it, you know. You just want to win as many finals as you can, and when you look back in your career, you know no one can ever take that away from you. Hopefully, we've got another win coming in Sunday, guys. We're we're going to turn attention to the game. Uh, Ask some twenty nine wins from our thirty one domestic matches this season. Uh, we've won eighteen of our last nineteen here at Hamden, with the, the obvious exception being last season against Rangers in the Scottish Cup. When I read those stats out and when you consider that we're we're playing so well right now and have virtually, I think everyone's fit for the game. Um, I mean, that must ease your, your nerves in some way. Yeah, we, we couldn't go into it in, in better shape. Um, and the the thing is, obviously, it's, you, you reference our form, but even just in general, at Hamden as well, we've been so good for so many years. I know it's obviously over a course of different managers and, and teams, but... We we used to be not so good at Hamden, um, you know, in the kind of but five six years ago that our our record there wasn't good, but now it just seems like you come away from Hamden so often we've been victorious. If you look at our form this season, you look at the fact that everyone's available. I think I, we spoke about it after the Aberdeen game. It's been a while since we've had uh, pretty much everyone available for one of these big games against them. Uh, so the the options we've got not only for the starting team but the options that we'll have to bring off the bench I think could be something that will really swing it in our favour because I think it'll be a tight game but I just think the fact that we've got such a strong squad and the players that we'll have to bring on could be what decides it for us Is it that April game that's given you the, the heebie-jeebies as I said on, on yesterday's video? Yeah, I think we went into that game as favourites as well and we were the form side um, they had they were coming off obviously a couple of European games, so everyone thought that might play a factor, which you know it turned out it didn't. Um, but it's you know they they've got a different side. They've, they've lost a couple of players that were big in that game, and we've obviously got a stronger side as well now. So yeah, that that does play in our mind because you just seen we we had an off day that day, um, and on a final that can happen. But you just feel if we play to our capabilities, then we are you know we should be able to show that we're the better side. Joe, they usually say that form goes out the window in these games, but I guess that's not really important here, given that both teams are in like such good form. Um, I think, I think they've probably won like their last kind of thirty odd games uh, uh, apart from from playing each other. Yeah, it is. You just never know what's sort of going to happen on the day as well. Um, you know, any any decision could go against you. So you just got to play the game, really, not the occasion. Like you said, two teams in really good uh, form. It's going to be a, a brilliant Sunday, Super Sunday, so much football on. And um, I'm looking forward to a three o'clock kickoff as well at Hamden, sell out. It's just, you know, for me, I just, like you're saying, the, the way Celtic are playing um, is a headache for the manager and I just can't see him losing. Can we can we do our teams then, guys? I'll I'll um, I'll try and do my best. I, I kind of feel like the majority of the team picks itself. I actually feel like all 11 positions possibly pick themselves there's maybe one one area we can touch on um, back kind of goalkeeper and back four wise I think it'll be Hart Johnson Carter Vickers uh, Starfelt and Taylor um, I, I, I don't think he'll deviate from that at all I think that's been solid I know Seagrass has kind of played the cups a wee bit but I think you, you obviously put Hart in for, for the game uh, McGregor's going to play Hatati's going to play so it's just about that final position you've got Moy O'Reilly uh, you can throw Turnbull and Awata in there if, as well if you want. Um, for me, it's it's Moy that, that plays. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was O'Reilly, given that I think O'Reilly obviously played last week, Moy was missing, and I thought O'Reilly had a really good game. And probably the last few weeks, he's really kind of come back onto a game. Um, but I just think Moy's been such an important player for us. Um, Asim, where, where would you come down on that debate? Yeah, that that's for me the only one that's up for debate. Um and I've I've kind of swung over the last couple of weeks because it was the Ibrox game I think where O'Reilly didn't have a great game and Moy came on and influenced the the result and then since then Moy's been brilliant and obviously even prior to that at the World Cup, uh, so as of even just a week and a half ago it seemed dead on Moy would would start, and then I think it was uh, obviously last week against Aberdeen O'Reilly played well. Um, 
I, I've now kind of gone around to thinking O'Reilly for the start, um, just for maybe the added kind of length. Um, he's he's played, he started this fixture, I think the last three, three four games as well. Um, and I just think Moy would be a great option to bring on, depending again on the situation at the time, if we need to maybe take a sting out of a game or just um, that kind of composure in the midfield. So I think O'Reilly just for his for his engine and for his like the fact that he had a good game, and I think O'Reilly's going to play with a point to prove. He's he was obviously a regular starter for so long, and then has had to kind of make way in the last few weeks. And I thought did well at the weekend there against Aberdeen. So either way, I'll be happy. But I think if I had to pick, I'd go for O'Reilly at this point. Okay, Joe, you've got the deciding vote. You like both players. Who are you going for? Yeah, I think this is the most difficult choice um, out of these two. Uh, but for me, I'd, I'm a big fan. I like O'Reilly. I think, you know, Moy has been fantastic over the last few weeks. But um, I think O'Reilly, because you've got McGregor in there as well, gives us sort of that security. I think it's important for, for O'Reilly to get forward, start creating a little bit more. Um, I think he just edges it for me. I think that, that that is the most difficult position out of those two. Uh, front three wise, Kyogo's going to start. Um, uh, Jota's going to start for me on the right with Maida on the left. I, I know a lot of people watching this would, would maybe want a bad in given his record against Rangers. Um, Asim? Yeah, I, I think I've, I've seen a few people saying a bad just because if it is obviously a bad he's up against, and as you say, his record in the last few years, he's been scoring goals and, and terrorising him down that side. So. But just again, Maidan form for me has has been he's been brilliant again for the last few weeks, um, and he just pins them back just with his pressing uh, and his high intensity, and, and not he's not short of quality these days as well. Um, so yeah, I think again the front three picks itself, but you just never know with Angie might throw in a curveball and and you know spring in um, a badder for this. But uh, other than that, I can't see any other changes really. I'm surprised you've not got Haksavanovic in for a start, given your, your love for <laughs> even him. But, I, even um... I can't. Even I can't put a case in for him just now. I think he could be a secret weapon. I wrote about this on the website. I think, given that this could go 120, by the way, really hope it doesn't, but he, he um, he's never played against Rangers. He was on the bench for the first game this season and he was injured for the game at Ibrooks. And I think he was pretty gutted to miss that game. Ange kind of commented on it. And I think he's going to be really hungry if he comes off, uh, off the bench. And if he plays like he did on Saturday when he came off the bench, you know, against tired legs... Uh, that kind of trickery he has, that creativity, I think could could could, could end up being a match winner, Haksavanovic. Um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Joe, you love Abada. Uh, have, you, have you got him in your team or, or are you going with uh, Jota and Maida? Yeah, I'm sticking the same. With, I think, you know, when Abada come on against Aberdeen, I did, I did think he was really impressive. Um, but I'm still sticking with the, with the front three. I think they deserve to be in the starting lineup and uh, playing against Rangers. But, that bench, I just haven't seen a, a bench like it at Celtic for so long. Anything, whatever happens in a game, you can bring anyone on to change a game. You know, even ask defensively or attacking wise. It's, it's, it's it is a headache. We've been we talked about it last time, and um, you know these players are knocking on the door, and when they do, I get the opportunity. They take it with both hands, and that's fair play to them because you can throw the your toys out of the pram, and you can you can sulk as much as you want. But you know these players have come in and, and proved the point when they have. Perfect. So there you go. That's the the lineup we've gone for, everyone. Um, between the three of us, Joe Hart and goals, back four of uh, Alistair Johnson, Cameron Carter Vickers, Carol Starfelt, and Greg Taylor. Midfield three of Callum McGregor, Rio Hatati, and have been outvoted Matt O'Reilly, and a front three of uh, Jota, Maida, and Kyogo. Um, any players were worried about, particularly from Rangers, Asim? Sakala obviously he's been he's been running his mouth a wee bit this week, um, and you know it's like you say it's light hearted stuff. It's you know it is what it is. We we've, we've kind of quietly gone about our business in our media press conferences. I've not heard yet today's ones. Obviously, uh, yesterday's ones of um, Cameron Carr Vickers gave nothing away. Gives less nothing. away in the media than he does on the pitch. Um, well, you know that that to me is fine. I'd rather that than than what they've been doing. Um, you know, you can see that they they get that from their manager really, and for me that doesn't bother me. Um, you can let them speak, and obviously, hopefully, we'll do our talking on the pitch. But in terms of players that can trouble us, Sakala's pace. Obviously, he had a bit of joy against Juranovic at Ibrox, but I think with um, Johnston playing there um, and and Greg Taylor, sorry, Greg Taylor back as well on the side at left back, so. 
Um, I think he will be able to deal with him better than we did that day. And yeah, there's been a lot of talk about their new midfielder, but again, you know, we've got we've got probably the, like you say the two best midfielders in the country and. McGregor and Hitati in form just now as well, so I'm um, I'm not overly worried about them. I think it's just more if we can bring our a game, and I think obviously like the last game at Ibox we didn't, but yet we were still we still got the draw. So if we can play similarly to how we did in the the other derby victories that we've had against them, then I don't think they'll be able to live with us. I think they'll go a lot more direct, um, and play a lot of second balls and try and just get us higher up the pitch and in the usual lot of cross balls. But I think that's the thing. Angel of Angel have watched those games back, and he'll he'll be ready for whatever plan they've got. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're talking about Sakala there, Asim. Joe, have you seen the comments? I mean, he, the ones he made earlier today saying Rangers are a far better team than Celtic. Yeah, I mean, for me, I got no problem with it. You know, I think um, you know every professional sportsman has to have some kind of level of self belief to to get to where they are. So, for me, it's just a, it's a normal comment for for a professional sportsman to make. See, like when you were a player, I dare say that stuff went on. Does that feed its way back into the Celtic dressing room? Is it pinned up in the wall? Does that kind of thing happen? Yeah, so, yeah. Sometimes um, you just pin stuff up on the wall. You know, obviously from maybe certain journalists, maybe certain players, managers, which have which have said something, and you know it gets back in the change room. But it just motivates you as well to to prove them wrong. Um, you know, you you understand when you're in the game. It's always mind mind games as well. So you got to be wary of all that. Uh, it's part and parcel of being at a big club and and being up the top of the league. You know, everyone wants to try and get a bit of you, but you know, it's, we've all seen it before. It's just whatever happens on the day. Yeah, as I say, I, I think it was a mistake to to provide extra motivation for the best team in the country. So we'll see how it goes on Sunday. Um, Official. In fact, before that, Ange has been pretty good this week. Ask him in terms of his his comments. Have you been kind of following them on various interviews he's been doing? I think he's going to give a an unbelievable pre match speech before the game. Yeah, I seen the clip that was obviously going around yesterday, which was um, I think like a separate clip that they're probably going to use on on via play, um, where Ange was just talking about, and I've seen a lot of people comment on that, just about generally about what this game means to to fans, and and you know, we we've, we've said it before about Ange, but uh, you know, every time he speaks, you just you you respect him even more in terms of it's not sound bites with him. You just feel everything he says is so genuine. He he gets how important this fixture is for for the fans. He gets how important that is in general. Um, and you just feel like you're you're so grateful that you've got this guy leading us because he he nails it every single time. And for him, I think he that that uh, inspiration, like you said, I don't think he'll take much uh, notice of what Sakala and and. Beal and that say I don't think he's the type of manager that probably would feel the need to pin that kind of stuff up because I think he's just got so much belief in what we do and he just concentrates on on ourselves and yeah I've, I've got so much trust in how we'll come about come out of this uh, this tie in this game sorry um so yeah I was I was looking forward to seeing more of of what he's got to say yeah you'll get to see that pre match um Joe his ability to say the right thing at the right time and exactly what supporters kind of are thinking and want to hear is is brilliant. Yeah, he comes he comes across so well with, with the media. I think as well that's why he's getting so much attention. Um, not just obviously what the stuff he's doing on the pitch, but off the pitch as well. You know, he comes across very well, and you know how much it means to to the fans and and families as well. Obviously, going around is a massive game, so the way he comes across in the media way is is just unbelievable. He's just really talented and says the right things at the right time. Yeah, definitely agree. Hopefully, pre-match, he's saying the, the right things. Um, shall we do officials, guys? Shall I, I lower the tone as I always do? Referee, uh, Nick Walsh, not great. Assistants are Frank <laughs> Connor and David Room. The fourth official is Kevin Clancy. Uh, VAR is John Beaton, which is also not great. And uh, assistant <laughs> VAR is Graham Stewart. Uh, you know, I mean, we've been quite unfortunate with, with VAR so far. I think you, you just hope that that VAR doesn't play a big part in yeah. in the, uh, the the kind of outcome of the game. Yeah, I think um, I to, to me it is a worry and it's a, it's a shame because you know you'd like to think that um, it won't uh, have a factor in the game, but you've just seen it so often this season. Some of the decisions are just so baffling, so you know illogical and ridiculous that you just worry that again on such a big occasion 
they almost like to steal the headlines sometimes and you just worry, about, especially with the handball situation more than anything. I think generally with offsides, obviously that seems to be pretty much cleared up most of the time now. But it's these um, dubious handballs, which I just gives me the fear because we've seen so many where we've we've had that go against us and so many where they've not had it go against them. And that to me just worries me that again, we'll see something like that and in such a big tie, it can obviously have an impact, whether it's a red card or a penalty in, in the momentum, but fingers crossed it doesn't. Um, yeah. I'm not holding it much hope. Well, we'll see how it goes. Um, people will be hanging on to your every word, Joe, more, more than me and Asim, so give us your, your final comment ahead of the game. You can give us a prediction if you really feel you want to, um, but it's up to oh, you. Oh, yeah, I got. Go. I, I love a prediction, yeah. I, like I said, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm a big... I'm a... I'm a big fan of that, actually, in a final, I think. Because honestly, just take the time um, and analysis uh, and have a look and, and making sure it's the right decision. You know, you, the worst thing you want, we've seen it plenty of years before, VAR and FA Cup finals and finals in Scotland and playoff finals, you know, goals which are, which are the wrong decision. So hopefully they get it right. But my prediction, I am going 2-0 Celtic. Do you want to expand on it and give us any words of wisdom? Or are you just leaving it at that? I am going to say as well, Jota to score. Good. And Kyogo. Oh. And then that's it. We're going to bring it home. I think you're going to have a goal first and second half. Can you imagine, Asim? It would be amazing. Yeah. The thing as well, uh, uh, where I live is not far from where you are at the moment, um, Hamish. So basically, it's the road that actually where all the fans' buses go by, and it's usually from from their end. Even the team bus goes by this road. So I remember growing up, I used to always uh, have my Celtic scarves and flags up at the windows, and my dad used to be raging just in case <laughs> the windows get tanned. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's 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 always a special one. Obviously, at Hamden, um, I, I think we'll I think we'll do it. Um, I don't think it'll be any like I don't think it'll be a you know, a three or four now. I've seen some people predict that. I'd love that, but I think it'll probably be a two one, two one Celtic. Um, yeah, I think we'll we'll nick it as the game goes on, just with our kind of subs. I think that'll, I think that will be the the pivotal factor, and we'll we'll get the job done. Okay, I've got to complete a, a full house then, don't I? I think Celtic are going to beat Rangers and, and win the cup. Um, but uh, nervy guys, very. I'm standing here, and it's like. It's uh, it's very quiet at the moment, but it's it's not going to be like that in in you know half an hour before the game or even before that. It's going to be a loud one, um, and it, it just it means a lot. This one, it really I mean they all mean a lot, but a cup final against Rangers means a lot. You know, keep keep the travel travel dreams alive. Um, but we'll be here after the game anyway. Uh, I think you're on us and possibly after the game chatting to me. You are still waiting for a ticket. Um, you did have one. But you, you gave it to a family member, which is a, a very noble act, something I would certainly never do. So fair play to you for that. And um, but you are short, so if anyone watching hears of a spare ticket, give give Asim a shout or whatever. Um but yeah, Joe, thank you very much. We'll we'll catch up with you again at some stage in the future. Thank I you hope boys. you thank enjoy you. the game on Sunday with the, the rest of us. Hope everyone else watching this enjoys the game and uh, yeah, we'll chat to you post match. <laughs>